Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Jeff Hebert. I am currently a member of Alderaan Base of the Rebel Legion in New England. I am here with the illustrious Mark Thompson, the narrator for many of the audiobooks for the past several years. And we are here to ask him a couple questions. How you doing, Mark? Hey, I'm doing great. Thanks so much for having me on here, Jeff. Absolutely. I, uh, as you know, I am completely blind. Um, one of the things that has always stuck out to me about audiobooks, especially the Star Wars ones, is that it's not just someone reading words into, into a microphone. With the Star Wars books, it's, it's an experience. You get the sound effects, the music, and everything. What's that like for you to record and to experience, or do you get any of that? I unfortunately do not while we're recording it. I wish I did, though. Like I, I sometimes wish they would pump it into the booth because it would kind of inspire the read a little bit more. <laughs> so um, I'm also kind of blown away by the production value that uh, the Star Wars books have because mm -hmm. um, it, it really does add so much. And it's like, it's almost like when I do, I don't always listen to everything, but when I do mm -hmm. listen, like it, it, I'm really blown away by how different my performance sounds once you add in all the ambient ship effects and, and the music cues yeah. and the, the blasters and like, you know any of the kind of background walla it just really like it's like you said yeah. it's totally immersive and it just uh mm -hmm. it elevates everything that i'm trying to do <laughs> so absolutely and it's it's so wonderful to see uh more um audiobook uh like recording companies start to include that there's a, a group called sound booth productions that i've found that really really goes the extra mile to add sound effects and different accents similar to what you do for yours it's amazing what they do now. That's awesome. All right, first, let's see. How did you get into narrating audiobooks to begin with, and especially the Star Wars ones? Well, um, oddly enough, my my first ever audiobook was a Star Wars audiobook. Um, and I always feel ashamed saying this, but like I was not much of a reader um, mm -hmm. before I got hired to do audiobooks. Like I, I kind of was the guy in school that would uh, get the Cliff Notes version or try to watch the movie of, of Mice and Men or whatever, <laughs> you yeah. know. And, uh, um, so I, uh, my agent called and I was primarily doing uh, animation voiceover work uh, mm -hmm. and, and kind of working on a lot of cartoons. And my agent called and said, well, would you like to do, you know, an audiobook?" And at first I was kind of like, eh, nah, I don't know, not really, <laughs> you know, like I've never... I've never done one before and I, I was kind of downplaying it and kind of not acting very enthusiastic. Mm -hmm. And then she said, well, it, it's a Star Wars audiobook. Would you be interested in that? And I was like, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Yes. Yes, please. You know, and, uh, and then they, <laughs> where, they, they sent where do me I sign, seal and deliver my soul? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so they, they sent me the audition and uh, I like worked really hard on it and, and you know, and it kind of prayed and I was like, you know, please let me get this. And, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I went in and I, I, I think I got the job because I could mimic some of the characters uh, mm -hmm. in the scene that were from the movies. Um, so I, I was kind of using my animation background to, to do some of that, mm -hmm. but you know, I'd never done an audiobook before. So when I got in um, all the pros, all the, the kind of, you know, inner monologues and descriptions of the scenery I was kind of just brushing and blowing past and just trying to get to the dialogue. Cause that's the part that I really wanted to, you know, dig mm -hmm. into. Um, and the director, Kevin Thompson, who's basically directed all of them uh, gave me some really great advice. And he was like, you know, the, the dialogue you're, you're, you're making interesting, but the rest of the stuff you're, you're, you're blowing by too quick. You're not giving it enough attention and you've got to make the prose as interesting as you make the dialogue, you know, because that's important. Mm -hmm. And it was really by focusing on that detail that um, I kind of fell in love with reading because like, then I was like, Oh, this is why books are cool. Like this is why yeah. this is what makes books different, you know? And, and, uh, and that, now I actually kind of sometimes enjoy that part of, of narrating the audiobooks even more than the dialogue now sometimes, because mm -hmm. you really like, there's no other medium I can think of where you really get to know what's going on in a character's mind and character's thoughts, you know, like you might be able to read into it a little bit from like facial expressions or things like that, but it's nowhere as deep when you're, you're kind of reading in their head, in their head. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, 
Mm-hmm. And then that was like the beginning of a long journey because that I, that was originally the legacy of the Force series. Um, and mm-hmm. that was like a nine book series. They wanted someone to kind of be the voice for those. And Some then, of my favorites. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they're, they're really great. And so I did that. And then it's kind of, it kind of snowballed from there. And, and I've gotten to still be a part of it even, even now. So mm-hmm. it's, it's really fun. How do you decide what you're going to make, uh, especially new characters sound like? And then how do you how do you work towards making already established characters with voices that people recognize sound as close as possible? Um, w- with the voices that are like legacy characters or characters that are featured in the films or, or the cartoons, mm-hmm. I will rewatch their scenes before I go in the booth. I'll record little snippets of, of, of their, their, their scenes that I can play in the booth. And I'm really trying to honor what's come before. So it's just for, for me, it's just playing it over and over and over again, and then just trying to emulate it as close as I can, you know, um, for new characters, uh, the author does a lot of the work because a lot of times the way the author is describing their personality or, you know, if they're human or alien, if they're male or female, if they're like, sometimes they'll add clues in the text about the quality of their voice, you know, like it was a low mm-hmm. rumble or it was like a, a, a very thin wine or, you know, or, or mm-hmm. annoying voice, things like that. Um, then, then I kind of play with all those clues and I, and I try to come up with stuff and I'll experiment with different choices and record them on my phone. And then the same thing, like when I'm in the booth, I'll try to play it right before I have to record their dialogue just to try to kind of remind me of what I was thinking I wanted them to sound like. I think for me, Thrawn is the voice that you nailed the best for me. All right. <laughs> that one yeah. is, it's, cause it's, it's both intimidating and like lackadaisical at the same time. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's like he's putting <laughs> no effort into absolutely crushing his enemies. Right, 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 right. Yeah. It, he prevent he he presents sometimes a challenge because um, when I'm doing the audiobooks, you have a range of characters. So some characters will talk very soft like him, but then other characters might talk really loud, or there might be an action scene where you're speaking and, mm-hmm. and even shouting sometimes. So it's like in order to not have to keep messing with the recording dial, it's sometimes hard to make sure that Thrawn is is still like you said, that lackadaisical, like kind of laid back, totally calm, totally cool, totally collected, but like, you know, still can be heard on the mic. And like, sometimes I have to kind of like lean into the mic really close to make sure that mm. you're picking up all that nuance. So, but I'm glad you like him. He, he was, he was a hard one to try to, you know, uh, honor and, and kind of emulate as close as I could to Lars. Cause uh, Lars is just amazing. Oh yeah. And then uh, next question. What's your favorite co- favorite project that you worked on in the Star Wars sphere? Oh man, that's hard. <laughs> that's like picking one of your babies. Um, yeah, fair enough. Oh gosh, um, what's the, what's the one you had the most like the like the most fun recording? I I would say well. The real answer I'm not allowed to say yet, but uh, the uh, of the ones that have been released. Um, I really enjoyed Dark Disciple because there was so much to play with there in terms of the Clone Wars characters mm-hmm. uh, and then also just kind of the, the story between Quinlan and Asajj Ventress and that felt that there were moments where I, I kind of felt like little mini out of body experiences where like I was kind of watching I felt like I was watching the scene and, and imagining it how it might be an animation you know doing that one and and uh, so, so that one was particularly fun you know mm-hmm. um, that's actually exactly how I experience audiobooks it's like that in, in Dungeons and Dragons it's referred to as the theater of the mind where you just ooh. close your eyes and imagine everything that's and just awesome. kind of let the information flow over you uh-huh. and it's it's really, really cool to sit there and be, be in my head and be able to take like a 360 image of what's going on in my book around me. Wow. When you listen to them, do you, do you just sit down to just listen to them or are you doing other things or are you? Oh yeah. I, for me, it's, it's all about the experience. Wow. I might be fidgeting with something like a fidget spinner or something, sure, but sure. every bit of my attention is on that scene in my head. That's really cool. And then 
do you do this full time or or do you have a side job and what is what's the recording session like how long that kind of thing um i do voiceover acting full time um but it's not always audiobooks like some like i i did a cartoon today um and then i did a a, a commercial as well today so like mm -hmm. Like, so, so, so it's, it's all kinds of different things it, like that, that, you know, what, whatever kind of work I can find, I guess, <laughs> um, for the audiobooks, um, I always feel weird saying this cause there's so many more physically demanding jobs in the world, <laughs> but mm -hmm. for what, for the work I do, audiobooks is the most like physically demanding because you're in the booth from like 10 AM until like 6 PM at night and Oof, it's yeah. like, you know, five or six days, you know, depending on the length of the book. Um, sometimes we can get them done in four, but that's rare for me. Um, yeah. And, and, but so it's, it's, it's like long hours and you're just talking, talking, talking. And, you know, obviously I'm making tons of mistakes and I'm flubbing my words and, and mm -hmm. paying lines as the wrong characters all the time. So, so a lot of <laughs> I would pay for a, for a blooper reel. <laughs> Uh, yeah <laughs> star wars lines read by the wrong character <laughs> yeah no it's pretty weird because you don't get not until the end of the sentence that you realize you know thrawn said and it's like oh darn <laughs> you know or like oops i did that in secret voice yeah 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 so um so those th those are pretty long days um and 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 you know like you like afterwards you, you don't feel like talking to anyone like you know i just yeah. get home and go to bed <laughs> so yeah. um, please leave me alone and speak no words <laughs> exactly yeah but, but I, have, know, I have exhausted fun. my count of words for the week exactly but it's like it's like getting to do like one one person plays you know those mm -hmm. days it's it's like you're, you're kind of and for me i don't know it's it's a little this might be a little strange but i, I like when i get in the booth i turn off all the lights and it's just the iPad and, and me. And I, and I try to kind of like just focus in as much as I can and mm -hmm. eliminate as many distractions for the room as I can just to, re to really kind of, you know, get into the moment of what's going on in the story. Yeah, I totally understand that. For me, like being in the, like I've, I've only been blind for five years, but being in the dark makes it a whole lot easier to kind of like picture it in, in the, like the room around me. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I feel so, like how has the the pandemic affected your work? Uh, it was pretty, I mean, I guess it's, it was pretty intense. Cause like at first um, all the studios were shut. So basically all the work went away. <laughs> so yeah. um, I wasn't working for a couple months and it was, a well, I was working on and off here and there, but mm -hmm. like I was, it was basically, I had to go out and invest in some new equipment. And then mm -hmm. once I was able to kind of make enough, blanket forts to kind of dampen the sound in my apartment mm -hmm. um i got to a system that works relatively well and i was actually able to work a lot from home so like today i'm working totally from home and we mm -hmm. actually did uh three of the books um three of the most recent books from home like we did uh the dr afra audio drama from home mm -hmm. i did empire strikes back certain point of view from home and we did uh chaos rising from home so so we nice. were able to, you know, it's, 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 it's really hard on my family. The audiobooks are torture for my family. Cause they, it's like, you know, they have to like be very quiet in their own house and like, <laughs> you know, like, oh, don't make any noise and I'm like, that's like my yeah. Head out the door. yeah. <laughs> so do you do um, conventions or anything like that? Do you have any memorable fan experiences that you've had meeting people? Yeah. Um, I've gotten to go to celebration. I think the past three of them and, I've gone to New York Comic Con and San Diego Comic Con, mm -hmm. and uh, and you know I, I love it. I, I I would go to those things even if I weren't going with the books. So yeah, <laughs> it's a little treat for me. Um, I I, get, I gotta see if you're ever coming to to Boston Comic Con because then I gotta make a trip down. Oh, I would love to. I haven't been to that one yet, actually. You, you were asking mm -hmm. about fan experiences. Um, I had a uh, one one fan came up to me, and. Uh, basically he shared that he was uh in the armed forces mm -hmm. and that um you know things were very stressful sometimes where he was stationed you know and one of the things that he would do to try to kind of help calm himself down or to try to like escape some of the intensity of of the war zone he was in was he would listen to some of the audiobooks i had done and mm -hmm. uh, that was that was particularly moving like that was like he he was very, 
you know, uh, he was, he was just be, being very grateful and, and kind of expressing how much that had helped him. And, and I've met like truck drivers that have kind of talked about crossing the country and, and listening to me and that, that, and that I kept them company and kept them awake. And, you know, that was cool. And, uh, and I also met, a, um, a fan who, who also was blind and, uh, mm -hmm. and just expressed how much that was helpful to them to, to be able to experience, uh, the books in that way. And so like those, those are stories that really mean a lot to me. And just, uh, I, I often think about them right before I'm getting ready to record and they motivate me to really try my best, you know, cause just, just knowing what some of these books mean to, to some of those people out there is, is, mm -hmm. uh, incredibly meaningful. And often as an artist, like I find that even just as a musician, I find that when I'm, if, if, when, I, when I produce music and I put it out there, which I have not done yet, but it's, it's not just for me anymore. I right. like, while I may make the music for myself, it means something to someone else. Yeah. And that's, I, I feel like that's important to remember when I'm, when I'm doing that kind of thing. Totally. And then, so since you get kind of up close and personal with every character in the book, who is, but like besides narration, who is just your favorite flat out character from the books? Uh, for me, it's Yoda, just cause like, I'm, I'm a huge Yoda fan. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I, I've gotten to, to do him in the books. I haven't gotten to like see him heavily featured in the books. Um, so yeah, I, I, I I'm going to go with Yoda. I'm going to stick with Yoda. And then I've always like my second right under it is Luke. And, oh yeah. Uh, you know, like he's, I just relate to him in a lot of ways, like trying, like just desperately wanting to do the right thing, but sometimes making mistakes or being too rash or, you know, and yeah. Uh, so those are pretty boring, answers, I guess, but like, <laughs> they're, that's what no, they're I, I totally understand. <laughs> he's, he's the character that, that I latched onto uh, as well. I, where my one of my costumes for the rebel legion the first one i ever did was his outfit from return of the jedi that he's all in black yeah to me that that just screams classy and i love the way it looks totally who else do you uh troop as i so for the rebel legion i wear phantom menace obi-wan kenobi nice and uh return of the Je jedi luke and i'm this close, like 99% done with Churit Imwe, the blind really? monk from Oh, Obi -Wan. that's awesome. That is so cool. <laughs> I'm really excited to get that one done. Oh, that's great. But as far as the 501st Legion goes, I do, uh, I used to have a TIE pilot, but I sold that. I've got a scout in progress. Uh, I have a character from the comics named Armand Izard, who's in uh, that officer uniform, but it's slick and nice, like candy apple red. Ooh. It, it looks sharp. It looks good because he's got like a white stripe in his hair going back. It looks great. Oh, neat. That's cool. And then I have Darth Nihilus from the Knights of the Old Republic games. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just got the, the new six-inch figure that they finally put out of him, and I'm very, very excited. Oh, cool. So what is your favorite Star Wars movie of all of them? Uh, again, I'm pretty traditional, so Empire Strikes Back. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah. See, I, I like I, I like the pre the prequels just because I grew up with them, but it's always Return of the Jedi for me. That's the one I, I grew up with most. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I've learned to appreciate Return of the Jedi more and more. I kind of uh, uh, the older I've gotten and the more I've rewatched it. Uh, mm -hmm. But M Empire is still my favorite, just because I I do just have this deep connection to Yoda. So, yeah, and because for me, like. One of my favorite, another one of my favorite performances of yours was the um, from a certain point of view book, and when you had those scenes with Yoda just kind of wandering yeah. around on Dagobah alone with Qui Gon's cloak. I love that story. Yeah, it's oh, I love that's it. one of my favorites. Yeah, there were some in there that uh, like the, like the cantina scenes were hard, a little hard for me to get through. Yeah, but those, yeah. those the ones like that one. And it wasn't due to your narration. I'm just not a huge fan of Tatooine in general. Oh, okay. <laughs> but, but those scenes on Dagobah were some of my favorites because they were just introspective Yoda. Right. No, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, the, 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 uh, the next one's coming out. It's either coming out this week or next week. And uh, I bet you'll like it. Like there's a lot of- Ooh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's my, it's my library. And then if you weren't doing audiobooks and, and voice acting, what do you think you'd be doing? I don't know. Like, I think um, I at one point thought I might want to teach. And then I, <laughs> I, I substitute taught for a while. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it was 
the fact that I was a substitute teacher, but it ended up like burning me real bad. Like I felt like mm -hmm. I went in like wide eyed and idealistic and like, you know, I'm going to show these kids a great time and I'm going to make this whole game out of the parts of the body. And they just were not interested at all. And they ate me alive. <laughs> so oh, yeah. what, I had a lot what, more what, respect what for teachers. <laughs> was it middle schoolers? It Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Was, that's why. <laughs> okay. So, so they're, they're, they're evil before they realize what good is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> Some of reading the books has made me tempted to try my hand at writing one, but Mm -hmm. uh, that it's so daunting like they like i i have so much respect for authors and just you know what they're able to do and and the times i've tried it i'm like whoa this is hard <laughs> I've, I've written a couple short stories myself and i've written some pieces for my my college's um literary journal but the the the, the, the struggle i have is is doing an outline yeah. i can't oh it's the worst yeah 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 for me when i write a paper it's i start and then i finish and then i don't go back to it ever again yeah <laughs> i never read it again i never open the file again i just send it to my teacher and it's done right 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 i think we are about running up on our time oh, okay well thanks so we, much we, for doing this absolutely man thank you so much for talking to me it's been a pleasure yeah absolutely anytime i have i uh, <laughs> I, I, as I've said, I've been, a, I've been a fan of yours for a really long time. I've enjoyed a lot of your work. Thank you. It's nice to meet Absolutely, you. Absolutely, man. It has been a pleasure. You have a good right. day, man. You too. Bye.